Hi, this is Valle, and I'm going to guide you through how to use Adlux for Unreal Engine. Welcome, and thanks for choosing Adlux. So the first thing that I'm going to guide you through is how to install Adlux. To get the installer, um, once you purchase the plugin, you will receive an email with the link to it, uh, but you can also find it always on the website, so adlux.ai. And if you come here to Plugin Installer, you will uh, come to the page where I show the instructions for it and the, the link to download it. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, you will see that a few warnings might appear. This is because uh, the installer for Adlux is still not certified. We are in the process of getting it certified, but until that happens, a few warnings might appear to confirm that you want to go through it. If you keep scrolling down, you also have the instructions for the installer, but I'm going to guide you through it now. So coming up to the download button, uh, use downloading it. It's a very small file, so once it's downloaded, we can open it up. And as we mentioned before, this warning might appear. So to go through it, you just go to more info. You will see that it says unknown publisher. It is me in this case, uh, so uh, run anyway. And I don't think this, this is showing in the screen right now, but a confirmation to install it will appear. So click yes, and the installer will open up. Um, Use next for the first part, and here we are gonna enter our credentials. This email is the email that you used to purchase the plugin or to register your account originally. And the password, it's either the temporary password that uh, you receive in the email when you first create the account, or the one that you have set yourself uh, after. If you haven't set your own password yet, you can do so here in reset password. So entering the credentials for it, we uh, click on agree to these terms and conditions and log in. And this takes us to the page where we can see all the versions of Unreal Engine and the versions uh, of the plugin currently available. In my case, I'm going to go with Unreal Engine 5.1, which the current version of Adlux is 1.0.1 uh, and click next. Here, by default, uh, it gives me the location of the, um, the Unreal Engine uh, 5.1 plugins folder. If you don't have it installed, or if, if you have Unreal Engine installed in another another drive or another uh, location, uh, please change the, the location here. It will tell you probably if you don't, if it cannot find that folder. Uh, but this is the default. This is where usually it's placed. So I'm going to click Next. Uh, here we just get any, some information about the uh, the file size of the plugin. Uh, so I'm gonna click install, and this will take just a few a few seconds, minutes, depending on your connection, to download all the files of the of the plugin. So I'll see you in just a, a few seconds. Awesome. So once the plugin is downloaded, you will get this um, uh, this message. So we're gonna hit next. And what this will be doing is uh, unpackaging the plugin and installing it in the in the right folder. So the bar here, the progress bar, you might see that it's that it doesn't move for a bit. Uh, this is normal for now, and it will sort of like finish it after. Once the plugin is installed, this page will appear uh, saying that it has uh, already finished installing or updating in in the case of of an update. And we can just hit finish here. So this is it. This is you have Adlux installed for uh, Unreal Engine 5.1. What I'm going to show you now is how you can open it up in a in a new project from scratch. So coming to um, the Epic Games launcher, I'm going to launch Unreal Engine 5.1, 5 which is the version that I installed the plugin to. And what I'm going to do is create a new project, just a blank project from uh, from scratch to show you how to initiate Outlooks for the first time. So I'm going to come to games. I'm going to select a blank template. And this is very important. You have to enable ray tracing. Otherwise, um, the plugin might crash or you will have to do it after you have created the, uh, the project. And I'm going to name this one Outlooks Demo. create and this is just a like you can name it as 
as you want. Uh, this is just this will work with any project that you have. Uh, it doesn't have to be an empty one. It can be a, an already created one. But I'm gonna uh, show you how to go through the whole process of it. So once the project is open, the first thing we have to do is come into Edit Plugins, and if we search here for AdLooks it will appear already. So we, we're going to enable it and restart now. Awesome. So once the project is open again, if we come to plugins and we search for AdLooks, we will see that AdLooks is enabled. So we can close this one. And we will find the AdLooks icon next to the platforms button. Uh, this will open up the interface for AdLooks. You can also find it in window AdLooks Lambda. So I'm going to open it up. So the first thing that it will request is the login. So uh, same credentials as we used for the installer, uh, same email and password, login. And this will open up the interface. So I usually have it docked here on the left. I find it quite useful uh, to, to have it here. So we still have the the viewport in the center and the outliner and the detail panels on the right and gives us enough space to to play around you can uh, the interface is fully proced uh, procedural or uh, responsive sorry um so you can play around with the width of it as as it suits suits best for you um and i'm gonna guide you through it but the first thing that you see is that atlas has four different uh, tabs we have a studio lighting sequence and render so starting with the studio tab, this is where we can create a photo studio uh, or a virtual studio to uh, create our lighting and, and our renders, but everything works in every other project. So even if you don't want to use the studio, you can still use things like the animation presets and the rendering interface uh, that you see here with the, the render, the shoot button on any other project, even if it doesn't have the, the studio. So come into the studio and gonna, if you, if you select one of the presets, it will create the preset in the, in the level that you have opened. In this case, it's this sort of like default Unreal Engine terrain. So just for the sake of showing, I'm gonna select one of these. And as you can see, we are still in the same level and it has created the studio um, just in, in, the, in the center of it. In this case, we don't want any of this sort of map or this terrain or the skylight or anything. So what I'm gonna do is instead, I'm gonna select create, create new studio level. I'm gonna hit the studio again. I'm gonna say that I don't want to save this one. And this will open up a new studio, sorry, a, a new level with the studio. So as you can see here, we don't have anything else in the in the level. It's just a, an empty scene with our default studio. Um, to as an introduction to AdLooks, if you haven't seen it before, um, the studio is mainly uh, formed by lights, uh, the cyclorama or backdrop, which is uh, this one, a camera, a DSLR camera, a target that if I select here, follows uh, all the lights and, and, and camera uh, follows it. And uh, in this case, the, the, the ceiling rail, which you can use to uh, to move the lights up, up uh, higher and get this like scissor support system. And also a few more things that I'll, that I'll go through later. So, we are once we enter AdLooks, we get in this AdLooks Lambda mode. Uh, this gives us options to get like shortcuts in the uh, like keyboard shortcuts to select cameras and targets and so on. So if you hit the Tab key on the on the keyboard, it will se automatically select the camera. And if you have multiple cameras on the scene, it will toggle through all of them. To showcase the different studios, uh, you can use click one and it loads automatically. Something that I like to do is uh, pin down the camera view here uh, to always have it present and, and sort of have a, an understanding of how the final render will look like. In this case, um, the tracking studio preset 
uh, it also brings a camera rail with it. I will show this further in the sequence tab, but basically it's an automated uh, camera rail that once you hit render, it it automatically renders the, the animation with it. Um, going through a few more, more of the studios, we have the Lightbox. This is a, a small sort of like a, a product, a visualization, a classic light box, but scaled up um, that we can use for for different um, different visualization projects. Then we have the turntable uh, preset, which if we come here to simulate, it will uh, do a turntable automatically. This is because it has this platform actor that is present in all the studios. Uh, but in this case, it has the turntable activated. As you can see in the outliner, um, so the studio is organized in, in this structure automatically, and everything that you move inside the platform, it will um, it will add to the turntable. So you can put everything inside, meshes, characters, whatever, and they will rotate with it. If you don't want it to rotate, you can always use uncheck turntable, and it will it will stop. I will go through this as well in the uh, when I go through the sequence tab. Um, a few more presets. So we have the reveal. Uh, this includes a an animation for the target. So the target will move from uh, from the front to the back, uh, doing like a, a sort of like a, a blur reveal. And also this slide here above, it will animate. Um, yeah, going going above. So this is quite nice for like a, a bit of a, a mysterious product presentation sort of thing, like an introduction or something like that. And if we continue, we have the glide preset. This includes the roller coaster, um, the roller coaster motion preset of the camera. So this is a sequence that uh, just automatically goes through the, um, goes towards the object and then around, up and above, always focusing on the on the object in the middle. And another preset here is the mist. This comes with a couple of backlights with colors and some fog. So that's why the, the lights look like they have some like mist, foggy feeling around. We also have the nerf. Um, this is ideal for like photogrammetry or like Gaussian splatting or nerf, cr nerf creation. So it comes with like three circular rails for three different cameras. So if you get all the renders out of this automatically, it will. You can use them to generate Gaussian splattings and nerfs in in external softwares. We also have the chroma preset, which brings a. It's an unlit uh, background. Uh, with a pure green color, so as you can see, it doesn't like the light doesn't affect the, the background at all. We could select this and say use and check and lead if you actually want it to to be part of the lighting of the scene. But if it if you want it to have a, a pure flat color to a chroma key or or use a change in post production, you can use this. And then we have the meta portrait which is specifically designed for metahumans or any other characters. As you can see here, it doesn't really fit well with uh, with our model uh, because the, um, the ring light comes above the um, the model. But this is sort of the height of a metahuman or a character. And the target also is set up to, f to fit the face of a metahuman. Uh, coming to the next preset is the, uh, the world preset. This is a an HDRI dome um, customized for for um, for Adlux. So we have this sort of like 360 environment that we can customize with any HDRI or any uh, equi equi rectangular image that we that we want to put like in a skybox or or anything. And um, if you select the dome, the backdrop here, it comes with this material by default. And this material brings a few options. You can change the image here to any any other HDRI or a skybox that you have. Uh, there are a few that come with the uh, with the plugin already. So if you come here and show plugin content, 
and it's a 360, um, a few options will appear, such as like this space shape sort of looking. Um, yeah, these these ones have been generated with Skybox by Blockade Labs, um, which you can generate um, like Skyboxes and 360 images um, from prompts. And you can also check this camera projection. And what this will do is what you were seeing before, it was a, a normal dome 360, but here is like wherever I move, the environment follows the camera. So it acts as a as an actual sort of like uh, HDRI or, or a dome for the, for the camera itself. I'm gonna uncheck this and just reset it to the to the original one. Let's save this. And the last preset is a, an AI randomizer. It has an ongoing development, so it will improve over time. We are training the model uh, to give us more accurate uh, and better results. And so if you hit it, you will always get a different result of a, a, a unique photo studio. So testing out a few ones. And from here you can edit any studio that you that you like. Like all of them, you can interact with the lights and the and the environment and so on. Um, you can also uh, create your own presets. So let's say that you find one combination or something that you that you really like to use. So I'm gonna darken this up a bit, and I'm gonna move the lights here and there so when when selecting the lights you can move them around change the intensity change the temperature of them change the the shape of it the size of it and let's say for the sake of testing I'm just gonna get rid of this one and maybe in this this is a bit too much so just lower it down here perfect and I'm gonna just move this one down here and yeah so let's say that this is the the preset that that we want to save so I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna call it uh, studio demo for example and I'm gonna save it I'm gonna save it locally. This means that it will be saved in this uh, project. If I uncheck local, it will save it in the in the engine, so it, I can use it in, in different projects. So um, I'll do it locally for this one, save. And it creates this custom preset uh, asset that you can find in the content browser at looks presets. Um, what this means is that even if I come back to another previous preset here anything that we that we had before I can always come back to my studio demo and apply it and we get the the one that we just generated um, more on the studio tab we have the studio scale multiplier this is ideal for things like working with uh, with big projects uh, working with big models for example uh, like big vehicles or let's say even like a, an airplane or or anything that doesn't really fit in the in the default studio so i can just uh, say that i'm going to multiply this by three or four so if i select scale studio the whole studio scales up and it scales up in a natural way so the light also scales up with it um, this means that the uh, the sort of the radius of the lights and the intensity scales accordingly to to the studio. So again, this is ideal for uh, big models or um, cases where you don't want to scale down your model to fit the, the original studio. You can also scale it down. So if we want to bring it back to, 
to where it was, it would be like 0 0.25. And this gives us um, our studio back. And the next part in the studio tab is the, uh, the elements to update. So as we have shown here, all the different presets have different lights, different backdrops, different uh, camera rails, and, and different settings. So if you want to select one of the presets without changing everything, you can simply um, uncheck. So let's say that I want the, the backdrop from the glide, but I don't want that roller coaster guide or anything. So I can uncheck all and just select the backdrop, click that preset, and it will um, keep everything that I had in my scene and just change that, um, uh, that backdrop. I can do the same just with the lights, for example, if I want to take the lights from the tracking preset or from the light box and so on. It will keep the backdrop, it, it will keep the camera and so on, and it will only change the, um, uh, the lights, what's selected here. Um, and you can also select just the lights and the rig rail, for example, which is the camera rail. So if I come back to tracking, uh, it adds the the um, the lights from tracking and the camera rail for, for tracking and so on. Uh, and this works also with the custom presets. So if I apply this one that we just created before, it just modifies the lights and the rig rail, which in this case didn't have one. So this is this is all for the studio. Um, the studio tab. We also have the the assets here. That you the same assets that you see in the scene. Uh, you can drop like drag and drop them from here. So like the dome, the cyclorama, and the room, which is all the same actor that you can change here um, to have different shapes. The room is more of a um, like a straight line studio. Uh, the cyclorama is a softer studio, and the dome is the 360 um, 360 environment. And we also have the ceiling rail here and the platform or turntable. Uh, with the platform, we showed that you could uh, have like a turntable for it, but you can also make it float. And I will show that in sequence, but it's basically just to animate the, the model uh, going up and down. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is the lighting tab. So if we come here to the interface in the lighting tab, we see that we have assets, engine, lighting presets, and the scene lights multiplier. The assets are the ones that you usually see in the in the studios that we've seen from the presets, and we can drag it and drop them straight into the in, straight into the level. And when you drag them from the interface, uh, they get activated into this placement mode uh, inside AdLux. Uh, what this means is that, for example, if I grab one of the lights one of the soft boxes, um, I can move the cursor and it places like a normal asset in Unreal Engine. But I can also control the, um, uh, the height or the position, the vertical position using the mouse wheel and things like the scale by using shift and mouse wheel or the rotation of the light with control and the mouse wheel. You can do this with every asset in the scene. So even the ones that have been already placed, you can select them and just press the space bar, the space bar on the keyboard and that will activate the, the placement mode for it. Another option to use the, the placement mode of the lights is if you come to your model or for example, let's come to the, the camera. Uh, so we are positioned in the, uh, in the camera. We are seeing what the, what the render will uh, will be looking at and now we can drag and drop um, lights from the interface and we can place them exactly where they are going to be uh, pointing at so we can this way sort of do like a light painting function uh, so if we choose to light different areas or to have a, a special uh, reflection here we can do so i'm gonna demonstrate this by just getting rid of all these lights and use i'm gonna drop one of these soft boxes here yeah, this is going to be easier to, to see. So now we can select what we actually light just by putting the cursor on top of the of the model, either what we light or what where the, flex, the reflection is going to be. And we can do this with all the all the different lights, just to 
compose our our lighting and our image. Uh, also, while you drag them, you can still do the like the mouse wheel to put them further away or close or closer to the model, and then using the shift up and down with the mouse wheel, you can also control the 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 scale of it. I'm gonna step away from the from the camera, and the last the the next part in the the lighting tab is the engine. Uh, this is a lighting engine switch. So usually um, you will have a ray, tracing, a ray tracing or lumen as the lighting options. And by default in Unreal Engine, you have to modify them in the post process volume and the project settings and so on. This is a shortcut used by clicking here. It changes the, um, the lighting model without any other input. Uh, so we have ray tracing, which in my opinion is a bit more realistic, but it, it is also a bit slower to load. And you can see that the camera uh, slows, like slows it down a bit, and also the quality it takes a bit longer to to load properly. Whereas Lumen is very smooth; it's great for real time, and the uh, the quality, as you can see, is, is very very smooth everywhere. Uh, we also have the path tracing, so this is a shortcut to the path tracer, uh, which is a more realistic render inside Unreal Engine. Uh, but also, as you can see, it's more, it's, it's, it has more noise in it. It takes longer to, to build a, a clean image. You have to stay in the same position for, for quite a while to, for it to, to denoise itself. Um, but it also offers way more realism. So the, the shadows, the lighting, the reflections and everything is um, almost physically accurate. It's, in my opinion, it's the best uh, renderer inside Unreal Engine for visualization. So with this, we can just swap between lighting models way easier than uh, than we would normally uh, with the default Unreal Engine settings. Uh, the next step in the in the lighting tab is the lighting presets. The same way that we have the studio presets that change the whole studio and add different cameras and rails and also uh, lights, but also the backdrop and, and the cyclorama and so on. With the light presets, we only change the lighting. So we can... Um, select a different um, uh, backdrop. So, if we modify our backdrop, for example, uh, let's make it uh, um, the Adlux golden color. And now, when we select the presets, the backdrop and the studio is not going to change, but all the lighting is. So that way, we can previsualize. And I'm just going to pin down the camera to uh, have a look at how the, the final render would look like. And that way, we can previsualize different lightings without having to change the whole studio, without having to change the camera, and so on. And of course, any of these presets, you can edit them on top of it. So you can always select the cameras and, sorry, the, and the lights and move them around, adjust them as you want. Uh, also with the placement mode, uh, with the space bar that we mentioned, uh, you can uh, just move them around as, as you wish. And we have a few more presets than in previous versions. Uh, we have this, uh, the class A, uh, the warmth and a couple of ones with colors and, and and so on. I'm gonna go back to the standard one and the last the last part of the lighting tab is the scene lights multiplier. This is a shortcut for um, modifying lights like all the lights in the scene in one go. Uh, usually, if you wanted to modify different lights, you would have to select them manually and Potentially, like you can select all of them and then change the values, but it, because there are multiple values, you cannot change them uh, proportionally and so on. So with this light multiplier, I can just say, for example, um, I'm going to multiply all the lights in intensity by 0 0.5, and I'm going to say multiply all, and this reduces by half, uh, or yeah, makes the intensity half in all the lights in the scene. Um, I can also multiply it by, let's say, 5. And you see that the whole scene gets way brighter. Um, and that can also be adapted per light. So uh, by 0 0.25, and use this one, and that one decreases. And the, the other part is the attenuation radius. So if I grab one of these lights here, and I move it away from the, oh, I have to visualize the, um, uh, the gizmos. If I move it away, uh, you see that the 
the radius of this light is this sphere here and it's uh, in here is where where the the effect of this light finishes so anything that's further away from this sphere is not going to not going to get lighted up uh, straight from the light um so if i increase the attenuation radius i'm going to multiply it by 1.5 for example um i can see that the light is having a, a a more distant effect so this is pretty handy if using the lights for bigger scenes or exteriors or or anything where you need the light to be affecting more or or less of the of the scene i can also use multiply by 0 0.1 for example and as you can see the effect of this light is very very small now it doesn't anything that's outside of this of this sphere doesn't get uh, affected by the light so you can play with this to to um, compose your your image and from here i'm gonna just go back to our uh, standard photo studio and going to the next stage, which is the, the sequence tab of the interface. Uh, here we have assets as, as uh, in the previous tabs. Uh, we also have rig rail presets that I'll go through in, in a moment and the level sequence uh, part of the interface. So the assets in sequence are the DSLR camera, which is the uh, Adlux's default camera, uh, which comes uh, as a cine camera, a cinematic camera from Unreal Engine with a few, a few features and few functions and, and properties added. Um, when you spawn it from the interface, it gets also placed in this like placement mode. So you can move it around, but you can also control it with, uh, uh, with the mouse wheel to go up and down, or you can just point at where you want to look and then just move it away or, or closer to, to the object where you want to see it. Um, also another thing, is that when you move the when you spawn the camera by default it applies to the um, it looks at the target in the scene but you can press the tab key to um, change the, ta the target so if we had several targets so i'm gonna place another one from the interface i'm gonna place one target here and i'm gonna enter in placement mode of this camera which is looking at that target in the center but if i if i press tab it changes to the other one to the other target, and if, it, if I press tab again, it just cancels the um, the target, so I can actually rotate it using control and the mouse wheel. Um, on top of this, we also have the uh, the platforms. So we have the turntable for the sequence, which is a uh, the same platform as it comes by default with the, the photo studio but it has this turntable activated and what this does is it creates when i'm going to place this the 3d sample inside the platform it creates a turntable for everything that's inside the platform on the um, um on the outliner so you can grab your 3d models there and just uh, create a a, a a turntable out of them uh, that easy and the other one is the floating platform so in the same way that we can activate this uh, turntable we also have the floating option and what this does is it creates this sort of like floating animation for the for the object uh, which is can be pretty handy for motion graphics and for product visualization the the other asset that we have here is the 360 camera and this is an automated 360 camera even if the, the preview doesn't look like a 360 image, but if I am just going to come here, do a quick render, and I'm going to place it like so. Uh, so just by selecting the 360 camera and having the, um, the, um, the render settings already set to use like a single frame, which is the, uh, the default, so you automatically get a 360 image of the of the scene. In this case, just because the render settings were set to like low quality, and uh, I think it's 1280 by 7, 720. Uh, so this image has a, a, quite a lot of noise and it's quite small, but it gives you an idea of how it is to to set up a 360 um, a panoramic or 360 image out of Outlook. Gonna delete this one and then the last one is the the rig rail uh, which is a a rail for either assets or cameras 
Um, usually by dragging it, uh, you can apply things on top, like put in uh, things inside the rig rail to, to move them. But uh, here's where the, where the rig rail presets come in handy. So if we select, I'm going to select the, the camera, just by selecting it, I can uh, select the different uh, presets from the rig rail and it will apply them directly on the on the camera. So we have the roller coaster which always uh, goes sort of like comes forward and then surrounds the object going up and down. Uh, the semicircular is a 180 degree um, camera, the 360 and this also so if you move the camera to another place either uh, further away or closer and you apply the preset again it calculates the the circle according to the target where the camera is pointing at so that way you don't need to modify the um, the radius of the of the rail or anything you can just move the camera apply the preset again and it will update it automatically so let's say that we come here and the same with the uh, um, with the other other rails like they will always point towards the the target we also have controls here to, de uh, to define the length of the rail by default. So if I come to like 600 and I apply the preset again, it just extends the, the rail. And the uh, same if you want like to do like a shorter ra uh, rail or something like that. The starting point is where the, the camera starts uh, or where the rail starts. So by default, it comes in the middle. But if I put it in the like at one it will be sort of like at the end of the rail if i set it at zero the rail will move to the other side so 0 0.5 is used in the middle depends on, on what you need uh, keep vertical this is handy for things like the circular um the circular preset so if i keep it vertical you see that the circle is sort of like parallel to the ground if i cancel this if i uncheck keep vertical and I select the, the circular again and the the rail follows the rotation of the camera um, so depending on your case again this might be uh, helpful or you might prefer to to uncheck it uh, invert is to uh, change to flip the direction of the rail and and we have a, a new camera uh, it is on a, a new camera with with the rail you selected so I'm gonna get rid of this and this and now, since we have this camera, I'm just going to move it a bit further away here and apply a, a circular one. Uh, and we come to our level sequence part of the interface. So this is a, an automated level sequence creator. Instead of having to come to the content uh, drawer and or the content browser and create a level and then bind the camera and the rails and so on, uh, this is all automated. So I'm going to say that I want a sequence of 150 frames at 30 frames per second. Uh, that will be five, uh, five seconds and I'm gonna name this sequence use test demo for example and I'm gonna say I'm using the content uh, you can save in current folder or by default it will save it in the in the Adlux folder so I'm just gonna say prepare level sequence and just like that it creates a sequence with the camera already binded and the the rail animated so if I come around um, the sequence if you play it you can see that the camera is animating around and everything is already set up when creating the sequence you can also change the interpolation of the rail uh, by default it comes with auto which is like the, the soft um, curve the soft interpolation but I could put it in linear and then we can also change a we can use the same um, sequence that we that we just created to update it instead of having to create a, a new one And this is the uh, the sequence tab. And the last thing, I'm gonna go back to this our uh, photo studio default, and we are gonna come to the render tab here, and explain the last tab of the of the plugin. Um, so what we have here is a render interface, uh, a simplified render interface. We have se uh, the settings presets, the render settings, and the batch option. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get rid of the level sequence that we just created here, just for the sake of testing. So, which is just like resetting this. Um, so this is how it comes by default. What you get 
is um, some presets for quality, so Quick, Real, and Production. Quick is based on the base renderer with like a 720p and a denoiser applied, so it's quite a, a quick render uh, and like low quality sort of thing. Um, Real is the path tracer with 1080p and no denoiser. This is the one that I like the most. You, it's the one that I usually use for all my renders and for videos and so on. And production is if you want something way uh, way higher in quality. It has the apex quality, uh, which is uh, or yeah, ultra or apex, which is way higher than 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 normal renders need. But for like the cleanest image, this is probably the best. It usually requires quite a powerful computer to run, so be mindful of that. And the output, we can simply select a single shot or sequence if we want uh, uh, just one single frame or um, an animation with multiple, with multiple frames. And just like that, we can come down here to our, our shoot button, press it, and that's everything you need to do to have a render going. Uh, so you don't need to create any, any level sequence or or any movie render queue settings or, or anything. Everything is automated here in, in Adlux. Once the, the render is finished, uh, here has been created in our folder, just like it would in, in a normal render. Um, if, the, if the presets are not enough for you and you want to tweak a few things from the render settings, we have the render settings here with sort of like uh, a simplified version of the movie render queue. So total frames, either one, or if, if you want a sequence for it, the frame rate that you want to apply to the sequence, the output path, which by default is uh, the folder uh, of your project inside uh, and a renders folder created inside it. Um, this is created automatically as well, so you don't have to worry about it. You can uh, put a title to the render for it to be uh, named in the um, um, in the in the name of the file, and you can also choose the naming convention for the file. By default, it comes with all this, which uh, just to showcase, uh, I'll show here the output of it. It's the the date, the time, the renderer used, and the number of the of the sequence. So you can select if you want, for example, to get rid of all the time and the date, and just have the render title, for example. You can do that here. Uh, the resolution, we have a, a set of resolutions here, um, like 1080p, 2K, 4K, and so on, but we also have things like the square. So if I select it and my camera doesn't match that ratio, uh, we get an, a notification just telling us if we want to update the, the ratio automatically. And just by changing it in the interface, the camera changes the ratio as well. And the same for the real, um, uh, the real, uh, format is a vertical format, a portrait format, great for things like Instagram stories or or uh, YouTube Reels and, and TikTok and so on. I'm gonna go back to our default uh, 1080p and going down to the to the render settings. Uh, this is the the quality. So we have low, medium, high, ultra, and apex. Um, low and medium work great for like quick renders for testing out. Uh, See, so have a visualization of how it's going to look like. High and Ultra are already pretty decent for a final result, and Apex is the best of the best, but only use it if you have a really powerful computer, because otherwise uh, there is a high chance that uh, Unreal might crash, or um, yeah, it might not be able to handle the render. Uh, for me, Ultra, working with a laptop on a 3080 uh, is, the, is the best. And if you want to set up your own your own uh, settings, you can always modify them in custom. So changing the spatial samples, temporal samples, and uh, uh, and, and the bounces and, and samples per pixel. I'm gonna just set it to high for now. And then we have the renderer. So base renderer uses either ray tracing or lumen. So base renderer is basically what you see here on the screen. Uh, if you have ray tracing active, it will look like this. If, it, if you have lumen, it will look like this. Um, and the, the path tracing renderer is what you see when you enable path tracing in the, um, in the lighting uh, switch. So personally, I usually prefer to render with path tracing. It takes a bit more time sometimes to get a, a cleaner result, uh, but it gives a more realistic result in the end. 
you can always choose both and it will output uh, both both results and the file format you can choose between png jpeg exr or mov uh, for for films for animations the exr is a multi-layered exr so you can open it up in photoshop and you will have different layers if you if you choose re um, later we will come to the render passes and so on uh, you can have like multiple layers in the same file um, in other options we have the denoiser uh, to either uh, to get rid of the of the noise by default or we can uncheck it if we prefer like a raw result with a bit more noise or grain which sometimes can be nicer with the path tracer for example and the motion blur is used if you have an animation or things like a turntable for example it applies a render uh, a motion blur to the to the render so it makes the the motion a bit more realistic more smooth uh, but i usually yeah if it's used for a static render you might want to to uncheck it um we also have things like the warm-up count and the system which are more things for the backup uh, for the uh, the back end of the the rendering system um and yeah we have the warm-up count which is the the frames that are created before the actual render in case you want to simulate things like particles or if you want to start animations before before the render and so on and in the system we have a safe render log which creates along with the um, um with the final render it creates a file an atlux file that contains the information about the the render including rendering times the system used for it and also a copy uh, well a copy of the information of the studio so you could replicate it in in a preset later um also we have this fixed one pixel black line which is a, an automated uh, process to fix a problem that unreal engine has with the path tracer that sometimes when rendering it creates a, a one pixel line in the border uh, which is quite annoying so with this is uh, automatically uh, solved and then we have uh, render passes which is a um, uh, where we can find things like the transparent background so if we render with a transparent background this message will pop up um, telling us that we need to set up the enable alpha channel support in post processing and this can be found in edit project settings and I believe if you write alpha, we have this one here. Post processing, enable alpha channel support. Uh, it has to be set to linear linear color space only for it to, to work properly. And this will create a um, uh, a render without the um, without the background or with a transparent background that you can edit in Photoshop and so on. Uh, there will be another video explaining all this uh, in detail. Uh, Cryptomate is like a puzzle, like an uh, like an object ID. ID render um, that it will go through in another tutorial as well but basically it creates a layer for each object in the scene or for each layer or for each actor you can you can choose here uh, and shadow pass I will go also through this on the on the other tutorial but it creates a uh, an automatic transparent shadow when when you have something like a let's say that our model is here I'm just gonna point the camera down there as well it would create a, a layer with an alpha shadow, shadow that we can edit in Photoshop and just customize the background without affecting the, the actual shadow. And the AOVs are the render passes as well. So we have all the base colors, uh, the specular, the roughness, and, and all this. And last in the render settings, we have custom render settings. If we want to load uh, some render settings previously made with the movie render queue, um, or if we want to load a level sequence that we have already created to animate something and the command variables where we can uh, put commands that we want to run during the, the render. And finally, we have the batch um, option, which will be uh, further explained in, in another video as well, but it basically allows you to um, automate uh, rendering multiple objects and multiple presets with lights uh, in just one go without having to do anything manually. Yeah, this is this is Adlux, and I hope you enjoy the the introduction to it, the demo. Uh, there will be more videos explaining everything in detail, more um, yeah, explaining every every different part in with a bit more dedication to it and explaining a few tricks and, and tips for it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy Adlux, and thanks so much for for watching it, and see you soon.